Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. We were given a copy of the Canon EOS Rebel SL3. Now this is unique for us because it's the first true DSLR camera that we had a chance to review. Yeah, it's been a world of mirrorless cameras lately and so we were a little surprised that Canon announced this camera and so we're going to test it out. Yeah, now we want to find out is this a step forward for Canon or is this a step backwards? The Canon EOS SL3 is Canon's compact DSLR camera. Now, they've made this a tiny bit lighter by about 4 grams compared to the SL2. They've put in a Digic 8 processor, improved battery performance, and 4K video, which we'll get into a little bit later. It does have the same APS-C size sensor, and it's 24 megapixels. Now, if you're thinking of buying the Canon SL3, it is a traditional DSLR camera. And what that means is that when I look through the viewfinder here, I'm looking through a penta mirror, down to another mirror, and out through the lens and optical light path. So when I look, bring it up to my eye, I see, just like I would a pair of binoculars, for instance, uh, the proper light path coming through it. What I don't see is my actual exposure. There is a, a meter on the bottom, of course, telling if you're too light or too dark, but it's not till you've looked at the shot that you see if you've got it or not. Mirrorless cameras do away with that mirror and that prism and they focus directly onto the sensor. Through the viewfinder or through the rear screen, you're going to see an electronic representation of what your exposure is going to look like. With the SL3, you can do that with the rear screen, but not through the viewfinder. So Canon has got their game on when it comes to ergonomics, I find, on cameras. I've always found them very comfortable, and the SL3 is no slouch that way. Really nice deep grip like this, I can hang on to it comfortably all day, the buttons and knobs are well laid out, and they have a good tactile feel. Yeah, it's really surprising considering how compact the SL2 and SL3 is, but it does have a little bit more to hold on to than the M50, and that might be one reason why you choose an SL3 over, say, the M50, which virtually has the same technology inside of it, just in a mirrorless form factor. Very true. Now, the one feature I do love, it does have my articulating screen on it, and this is great for low-angle shots or high-angle shots, and something that I haven't seen for a while is a manual pop-up flash. Yeah, you just have to flick it up Slip if you it want up. to turn it on. <laughs> um, now back to the touch screen yes. though, it is really responsive, it's nice and bright, and Canon always does such a good job with their touch screens, as well as their menu interface for beginners. Yeah, now we are on a really bright sunny day here, but keep in mind this camera is not weather sealed whatsoever, so be cautious of that. Yes, alright, so besides the, the nice heftier grip and uh, I guess viewing your images through an optical viewfinder, why else would you want to choose a DSLR camera over some of the mirrorless options that we have out here, including the M50? Yeah, now I think if you want to kind of have that retro kind of experience with an SLR camera, where you hold it up to your eye and you optically look through the viewfinder and see it, I think it's kind of cool to play around with. You are giving up a lot of autofocus points. You only have nine autofocus points available to you, but most people tell you just choose the center one and focus and recompose. Yeah, no, of course, that's only when you're looking through the optical viewfinder. If you are using the LCD screen to make it more like a mirrorless camera, you do have access to the dual pixel autofocus as well as the face detection software, which is yeah. really nice. And with the SL3, the face detection and the pupil detection or eye detection in live view works so well. I'm finding myself using this camera in a mirrorless sort of functionality more than I am as, as an SLR. Yeah, and that's a first for the Rebel lineup, and so we're really impressed that they did put this upgrade in the SL3, and I think that's one of the bigger selling features. The biggest headline feature on the SL3 was that it now had 4K video capability in a Rebel, but this has a significant 2.64 crop factor, meaning you are getting such a tight frame for your 4K video. Yeah, now shooting 1080 is not a big deal, but if you want to go for 4K and you're into vlogging and you want to shoot indoor family kind of events, you're going to want to invest in the 10 to 18 from Canon because this is going to give you that wider aspect. Now, you can use your 4K crop to your advantage. We're just down by the river here and it might be a good chance to show the positive side of a 4K crop. We've got some birds just down there a little bit, so I'm actually going to switch to the 55 to 250 lens from Canon and see what I can come up with. If you are choosing this camera because you want to be able to shoot video, I would still shoot in 1080 HD, and that's because you have access to the dual pixel autofocus system, which works amazingly for video. However, you don't get that if you're shooting in 4K. Now, keep in mind, if you are shooting in 4K, you are limited to only 24 frames per second. If you go to 1080, you do have 30 and 60 options, but that's it. Yeah, no 120, so you can't do ultra slow-mo either. And of course, because you're limited in the frame rates, depending on 4K or HD, you're not able to cross-use that footage. Don't get me wrong, the SL3 is a really fun camera to shoot with. It's a really enjoyable 
experience for a new user, especially as a family camera or first DSLR, I think a lot of people would be really happy. And when it comes to image quality, 24 megapixels is really decent. It's just not a new sensor. It's nothing super exciting. But we know this. We know that Canon files, the colors are nice. We like the contrasty look that they provide. And I think for most users that are new to photography that would pick this camera up, wouldn't be disappointed with that. Yeah, and it does shoot five frames per second. It does have a microphone jack if you want to put on external audio. My problem with this camera is that it's sort of lacking an identity. It's, mm. it's got the great functionality as a mirrorless camera through the rear screen, but you also have an SLR style experiences if you want. Now, I find it's like an 80-20 mix for me today. I'm finding 80% of the time I'm using the rear screen because the dual pixel autofocus works so well. Yeah. And if I raise it to my eye and I want to use the optical viewfinder, I feel like I'm stepping back in time to a nine point autofocus system, but I am having trouble recommending it, especially with cameras like the M50, which is a true mirrorless camera. I know, my biggest question is why? Why Canon, why did you release this camera? <laughs> it's not really a step forward. It's not really a step back. It's not like they're creating a more economical option. It's kind of like a step sideways with technology. I would agree 100%. I've been trying to come up with an analogy for the camera today and I'm finding it's like a, a pretty decent first date. <laughs> you know, you go out, you have dinner, drinks with somebody, you know, conversations flowing, but there's no real spark. There's no real excitement there. And then halfway through the date, you're like, eh, I'm good with one. <laughs> I think you're the Jerry Seinfeld of the camera review world right now, but I have to agree with you. I mean, there's nothing that's really innovative or special about this DSLR camera. And I think that there's a lot of other mirrorless options that would be more compelling under the $1,000 price range. Um, now, of course, this does have a lot of boxes ticked. It has 4K video. It has the dual pixel autofocus. It has better battery life. And so it would be a good first DSLR if that's what you really want. You just have to do your homework. So let us know what you think of it by commenting below. Yeah, make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification dial so we can catch you guys again really soon. See ya.